Hello everybody, it's Coot. Um, right, it's Boxing Day. Cooked for everyone yesterday, did too much as per normal, and there's that thing of leftovers. Now, Boxing Day for me today, it's the evening now, um, has been like charcuterie, you know, and um, just picking that stuff. But I know a lot of you have asked me what to do with leftovers. Andrea Horner, for one. That's right, I didn't do it uh, today. I was, you know what, I was feeling a little bit delicate, a little bit tired. But today, tonight, I'm going to go through my favourite thing. Now, turkey goes a lot with a lot, with a lot of things. If you had turkey, leftovers, you've got the basics, you've got the curries, the chilies. Um, you can shred it into a salad, make paninis, do like a shepherd's pie, but with turkey bits instead. All very good. I'm going to just do a regular pie. Um, I've got my little cases here, look. So, little individual bad boys. And I'm going to go through everything that was left over. So... Yeah, we have, I don't know, I don't know, I just ripped it out of the fridge. Yorkies, sprats, roasted parsnip, carrot, okay, there's one. In here, we've got the rest of the bird, we had turkey and ham. Already you can see the breast there, all the rest of it. Okay, that's there. Um, did a broccoli and stilton bake. This is all going in the pie, just little bits of everything. Holly cheese left over, very nice. Got my father-in-law's stuff in, famous stuff in. Look how much there is. Smells, well, stuffing here. Really, really tasty though. That's going in the pie. Got my smoked gammon. That's going in the pie. And that's it. Oh no, bit of gravy. That'll go in the pie. And I'll mix with some cream. The only two things you need that aren't leftovers Three tins, if you don't have pie tins, just do it in a cake tin. A cake tin. Flour, just to dust the side. And whatever pastry you've got in the cupboard. Now, I've got short crust, but you're probably better off with puff. Now, uh, when I come back to you in a bit, I'm gonna have this rolled out. And I'm gonna cut it to show these. We're gonna give the pie a bottom. We're not gonna do those cheap things when you go to the boozer and they go pie of the day and you're like, oh, steak and kidney, chicken and mushroom. You're like, yes, I'm gonna get a pie. And all they do is fill their little, try to be nice, little dish full of the pie filling and then just put a puff pastry lid on top. Bollocks to that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a pie bottom, short cross pie bottom. And I would have done a pie, puff pastry pie top but I haven't got any, so it's gonna be a pie with the pastry all around, and then we're gonna put in, picture it now, pastry bottom, stay with me, potato, like got a mash, a little mash up of the uh, roasties, or do mash if you're that way inclined, mix uh, a layer of that at the bottom so the pastry cooks and doesn't get glue bit, uh, like wet, then some stuffing, then I'm gonna combine the root veg, the Brussels sprouts, dice up some turkey and some ham, some cauliflower cheese and some broccoli bake. I'm gonna mix that all together, big, big mix in a mixing bowl. Um, and add a little bit of gravy and cream to bind it all together, and that'll be our filling. So, roast potato at the bottom, pastry, sorry. Roast, roast potato at the bottom. Oh, there we go. Then stuffing, then our pie filling. Then I'm gonna to top a bit of cranberry jam on top of that. And then we're gonna put the pie, uh, the lid on the pie. Give it a little funnel. You can freeze these down in the case, and I'm gonna take them over to um, my family, the next family Christmas, in a couple of days down in Hampshire. Right, so that's about it. This is my leftover turkey pie from Christmas. And then I might do a live in New Year's for canapes, and then we're into um, New Year, New Approach course, starting the 2nd of January. Right, bear with me, I'm gonna roll up some pastry, I'll catch you in a bit, bye. Right, I'm back, here we go. These are the pies, I've been baking, uh, baking rolling, dusting, all the rest of it, egg wash. I'm gonna go through everything. So you will have, at the end of it, a lovely looking, cheeky little pie, not massive, about the same size as the pie, the palm of your hand. I'm not overfilled because when it cooks, it will spill everywhere, okay? So let's go through the process of making a little festive leftovers turkey pie. First things first, pie dish. Little normal bar, literally the size of a pea, okay? And we're gonna just grease that, okay? How are we doing anyway? Merry good Christmas? Oh, I've been so much, look at the state of that. Oof. I've been cooking, so I don't know, quite a few days on the bounce. 
in the lead up to Christmas and this weekend and for New Year's I'm going to go and see my family, go down to Hampshire and have a few days with them but I've eaten, I've eaten a lot, it's been absolutely crazy. Right so, the grease tub, oh, you can't see that, hang on, let me go. Perfect, right so there's our grease tin. And so I showed you earlier, I've got the short crust, it was just what was in the fridge, um, top tip. Um, if you're going to roll pastry, take it out of the fridge first and then it get to room temperature. Um, I don't know, half an hour, hour. And it just makes it a little bit more malleable. If you take it, sorry, I've got a bag of flour here. If it takes a bit, uh, just makes it easier to roll. Press it down, put it in the flour, just take your rolling pin, give it a rub, dust that, and then roll it out. Now, the thing with pastry, Especially shop bought stuff, if you haven't made it yourself, you don't know what you're going to get. Let's go gently. It's not bread dough. You're not knocking out something tough, it's fairly fragile. And for this one, because I've got one pack and I need to make eight, eight pies, I'm taking it quite thin. Basically, I'm being tight. I should have just bought another packet of puff pastry. And we'd have been golden. Every time you tip it over, make sure it doesn't stick. Bit more flour on there, board and on the pastry, so you don't hit any bumps. Okay, and then run your hand over it and you can feel the thickness, so it's a little bit thicker here. So I'm gonna roll it this way, instead of thinning out a little bit. So just, yeah, have a little caress of the pastry. And then we want it to go down into there, so we want the, ideally to cut it, cut it, wider than that, so I found a bowl in my fridge, in my fridge, in my cupboard, it's been a long day. I'm going to cut around that. Take your knife, pretty simple, what you do with your kids or when you're at school, cut around the bowl, and you're going to need this. Now, there's a lot of people uh, tell you to just roll pastry in dough once, because the more you roll it, uh, the less it's static it get, elastic it gets and it just turns into like crumbly nonsense and you can't get anything out of it so you need to be gentle with it and not roll it lots and lots and lots like minimum rolling okay so there's our pie with this I'm going to give it another go I need to make a round little ball for the lid so I'm just gonna do that in slow motion I'm just pressing it between the two just to make sure because it's it come out off that in pieces I'm just gonna Roll it so it combines together a little bit. Spread the flour out like a dough ball. Push it down, and then give it a little bit of some flour and a little bit of love, and then keep getting flour. Put that with. Sorry, it's, it's quite late. The reason I'm quiet is because everyone's asleep upstairs. The length of my go to make sure you guys can. Some advice, right? Just check it. Yeah, that's close enough. It will stretch a little bit and it's not too thin. Okay, so we've got our base. What we're going to do in the bottom of there is I have one of my ro one rose potato. Ta -da! And I've cut that. And what we're going to do, can you see that? I'm just going to put it around, sorry guys, amateur hour, the base like this. So there's your potato. I'm going to take a generous helping of uh, my father-in-law's stuffing, okay, and just, it's, I know it looks like cat food, it's not, it's delicious, it's like a really, it's like a coarse pate actually, really fatty but really tasty, loads of onions, loads of chestnuts, so <laughs> um, you will fart a lot the day after eating it, but a really nice stuffing, okay, so we've got roast potato and stuffing. From that I've made a mix, this is the last of it because obviously I've made seven more pies. I know it looks again pretty grim. Um, that has got in your turkey, your ham, cranberry juice, cauliflower cheese, root vegetables. I'm just going to sit that on top. Gravy. And a little bit of cream because we don't, we don't want a dry pie. Who wants a dry pie in this day and age? So push that around and that's our filling. Two sets size. That's why right, I'm back. Okay, so 
tuck that in a bit. Don't want to tuck overlapping and spilling out. So there's our pie. What I'm going to do on top of that is just a little teaspoon of cranberry. Not for presentation or anything else. What will happen is, if you look closely at the ones I've already done, it's a little knife, if you put the knife and you twist it, it's a little funnel. Cranberry will come up there, but it will seal. It will, sorry, after, after everything's escaped through the top, it will make a nice little top seal, look pretty, blah de blah de blah. Right, I'm sealing the pie now. Use a brush, but I just basically get a ramekin of water, dip my thumb in, and then I'll just rub gently the edge of the pie bottom that's on the rim with water. Take your pie lid that you just saw me roll out, dry your hands off, get rid of the water, and then just push it down. Nice and gently again, treat the pastry with respect. If you go really ball deep at it, you're going to tear it, and then you've got to use the offcuts for holes. Okay, so you should be that far. Make sure everything's sealed. And then you take the back, up the front, right, okay, there's the blade. Take the back of the knife and just trim it. If you use the blade, you'll just chink into your uh, tin and it will make you look fugly and it won't last. Now, with the off cuts here, you can make a pretty pattern. You could roll it out again and make a run and put a turkey or write someone's name on it or whatever you like. I'm just going to leave one as is. I need a fork, there it is. And then I've pressed it down, but I'm going to do this as well. I'm just going to go around. And I'll just push my fork and it will just make sure the pastry seals together, okay? Nice and easy, nothing's hard, no nothing fancy equipment. And you'll see around the edge, lovely up. In with the tip of the knife, better zoom in right for this. In and then twist, and then that's your little chimney, your little funnel to let everything escape so people don't so it doesn't build pressure and go bang. And that's it. Last thing. I don't know if you can see the difference here. Let me bring it up to the uh, camera. Egg wash, not egg wash. Crack an egg into a dish. Dip your brush in. I'm sure you've all done it before, but it's pretty simple and that gives it that lovely glossy finish in the oven. So there we are, guys. That is my leftover Christmas pie. Really simple. And then yeah, I'll be eating them tomorrow. Take care, have a good one. Happy 2020 by the way. And um, oh, where, where are my manners? I'm running a new year, new approach course starting the 2nd of January. Basically for everyone to get their head in the game if they're trying to lose weight, feel better, pick up some cooking skills, uh, approach food and cooking with a bit more uh, sense, some wicked cool kitchen smarts and confidence. So for four weeks, starting on the 2nd of January, if you hit the blue button upstairs, you can find it on my website and sign up and we'll go through uh, prep cooking, batch cooking, uh, calories, macros, bits and pieces, not nutritionists. I've got a wicked cool friend, Pippin McKean, uh, a nutritionist that would sort you through that. I'm just going to teach you how to put the prep meals together. We'll get together every Sunday and um, smash out of January and start your 2020 right in a good frame of mind for cooking for the rest of the year. February will do something like, I don't know, romantic dinner for three courses. There'll be courses coming all next year. All right? Thanks very much, guys. Have a good New Year's.